Hey everyone, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order at six o'clock, and we'll ask for Chief Rayner to lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I get a roll call? Here. Here. Joe? Joe? Here. Got it? Okay. All right, we have a quorum. We'll now move to item number four, consideration of approval of agenda. Do I have a note? Council Member Jones. So moved. Do I have a second? Mr. Begonia. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, agenda approved. We'll go on now to item number five, presentations. And I'll step down to the lower. These here. properties. Um, yes, and the restaurant specifically is, can you say in Thank you. I'm in Chicago. Okay. This is going to be for a certificate of recognition presented to Delatory Properties, 2160 East Pacheco Boulevard, for being named the 2023 Recycler of the Year by Mid-Valley Disposal. Thank you for doing a fantastic job in waste management. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you, um, Council, for having us. Um, I did want to say just a little bit. Um, why El Michoacano was selected for the 2023 Recycler of the Year. Um, they have, since we began services in the city, they have um, participated in all three programs um, willingly and have done a really fantastic job at separating all of their commodities, recycling, food waste, um, organics, trash, um, they work with Teresa, who's your recycling coordinator for this city. Um, and we think that they just set a really wonderful example, um, a small business in the community. Um, they set a beautiful example of how to best manage their waste. So we wanted to recognize them uh, this year for being the recycler of the year. Thank you. Great job. All right, we'll now move on to item six, public forum. Members of the public may address the city council members on any item of public interest that is within jurisdiction of the city council. It includes agenda and non-agenda items. No action will be taken on non-agenda items. Speakers are limited to a five minute presentation. <clears throat> Detailed guidelines are posted on the council chamber's information table. And if anyone would like to come up. And I remind the rest of the chambers to put your telephones on silent, please.
Good evening. Uh, my name is Manuel Cunha. I am president of the Nisei Farmers League based in Fresno, California. Uh, we're an agricultural organization. We represent growers and farm workers throughout California. And the Niseis also have two last Niseis left in the state of Washington that uh, their age is 97 years old, the two farmers that are left of the Nisei group um, that was formed um, in 1970 to deal with various issues confronting them, but as well as to deal with the redress issue of the Japanese Americans that were in, um, incarcerated in 1942. The League has grown tremendously. A lot of our work deals with immigration, it deals with farm workers, it deals with the farmers, the ranchers, the packers, the processors. What you have before you today that I've handed out to your clerk is a document that is called um, the Sustainability Coalition. And the Sustainability Coalition is basically asking for one thing, for the governor to meet with the industries, the ports, the labor, IWL, and you'll notice those logos of the diversity of industries that have come together. And this afternoon we have received the city of Lemoore has signed on. We're having the city of Needles, Blythe area, also coming on. So you have three major signatories. You have business, the ports, agriculture, manufacturing, processing. All of those people are coming on board to ask the governor for a meeting to discuss his policy goal of going the entire state by 2035 has to be all electric. Everything, all of the cities, towns, houses, and everything all have to have electric hookups. And our concerns are great because of the cost and how cities, that houses were built in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and their streets. How do you bring infrastructure of that type? Also in the document, it asks for where's the infrastructure? Where's the power coming from to suddenly put? In the document, it also talks about for one electric truck uses the power of five houses. That's its equivalency for two hours. It takes that much power for a two-hour electric truck to charge. So we're asking the governor, hey, we need to meet with you. We have some serious issues. Secondly, on January 1 of 24 this year, ARB, the California Resources Board, had a regulation that said all trucks entering the ports in California have to be electric. Long Beach, LA is the biggest port on this part of the coast. It has 18 million containers. They have 22,000 trucks that enter that port and move containers. As of December 1st, they had 135 electrics, trucks. The issue with the electric trucks is a variety of things. The cost from a diesel, cleanest diesel truck made today is very, very clean. If you look at grams per brake horsepower of, let's say, 8.5 grams of emissions to 0 0.078 grams. So we've gone a tremendous way of cleaning up all of the trucks in all manufacturers. That cost of the electric truck is 520000 The electric, I mean, the new diesel is 288, three-axle tractor. Most of us have what we call 14,000 pound trucks. They are what we call a dually, a one ton. All of the one tons as of 2024 of January have to register with CARB and pay a $30 fee and get a four times smog check in a year. You do normal cars once every other year. But ARB's rules show that you have to register a smog check four times a year all trucks coming in from outside of California, Mexico, and Canada must register and must do a smog check. They are also included into the four times a year if you're going to enter California. All of this type of activity, along with all of the cars of having homeowners in rural communities like yours having to buy a brand new electric car by 2035, and how... Minute. One, one minute. I'm just giving you one uh, I'm, I'm done, right? The time? No, no. You got one minute. Oh, okay. So my question coming to you this evening is you have a document. We'd like for your city to sign on to the coalition sustainability letter. Many other cities have been doing it. To ask for a meeting 
with the governor to talk about he needs to move his policy way out because there is no way that your cities, our cities, the independent truckers and all that can comply. And right now they can't. There's no way. And the cost is prohibitive. And the insurance and everything else that goes along with an electric is astronomical. So I'm just tonight bringing this forward to you so that in the future I would hope that your city could take this up as an agenda item and vote on it for supporting and coming on as the mayor and your city logo. And it's it's just to give the governor an opportunity for him to meet with the industries and the people and everybody and figure out a plan that will work. 2035 is not going to happen. It just okay. can't. So thank you very, very much for your time, uh, the entire council, and I appreciate a mayor for all the opportunity to be here this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I am Patricia McCoy, and um, I'm just here to inform the council and the community that the American Legion and the VFW here in Los Banos is partnered with the Central Valley Honor Flight, and we are selling um, drive -through, rigatoni drive through dinner tickets that will benefit the Central Valley Honor Flight. The drive through dinner is Monday, March 11th at um, between 4 and 7 p.m. at the DES Hall. Tickets are $10 each, and you can see um, pretty much any of us veterans, and we will gladly sell you some. And if you don't eat the pasta, then feel free to buy some tickets and give the dinners away. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Pro Lab Lambert and Council. Chris Santos here representing the office of Congressman John Duarte. Uh, Congressman Duarte recently had the opportunity to meet with Golden Valley Health Centers, which operates a clinic here in Los Banos, to discuss how to increase health care accessibility in the Central Valley. During that meeting, the Congressman was immensely grateful and humbled to receive the Distinguished Community Health Center Advocate Award for 2024. Congressman Duarte is proud to have voted for the bipartisan Lower Cost, More Transparency Act. The 13th District is home to six federally funded health center organizations, including Golden Valley Health Centers, that operate 66 different delivery sites serving 459,000 patients here in the Central Valley. One in every 12 Americans and one in every five rural residents gets a primary care at a community health center. The Lower Cost, More Transparency Act authorizes more than $48 million in multi-year federal funding for these vital primary care centers to keep Valley patients out of crowded emergency rooms. The act also requires all hospitals, clinical laboratories, imaging service providers, and ambulatory surgical centers that participate in Medicare to annually publish their prices and fees, including the discounted cash price and negotiated charges and fees. By requiring nearly every corner of our health system to publicly disclose their prices, the Lower Cost, More Transparency Act empowers Valley patients and creates incentives for these providers to lower their prices across the board. The act also addresses the skyrocketing cost of prescription drugs. For years, pharmacy benefit managers, PBMs, have charged payers like Medicaid more than they pay the pharmacy for medication and kept the spread or difference as profit. The Lower Cost, More Transparency Act finally bans abusive spread pricing by PBMs that participate in Medicaid. The act also requires Medicare Part B to pay the same amount for physician-administered prescription drugs, whether provided in an off-campus hospital outpatient department or in an independent physician's office saving Medicare and ultimately American and Central Valley taxpayers nearly $4 billion over 10 years. From co-sponsoring the Rural Hospital Technical Assistance Program Act to joining the Congressional Bipartisan Rural Health Caucus, Congressman Duarte will continue to be a fierce advocate for the priorities of Central Valley patients and their families. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. Mayor Pro Tem Lambert and council members. I'm Ann McCauley, uh, Los Bonos resident for 27, 28 years. It's really heartwarming to see how much work has been done uh, in the city uh, from road paving to uh, trimming trees and um, getting some new street signs in places. I talked to a, um, a laborer today that works for the city and, you know, I just really felt uh, that when people, uh, and this person just loves working with our new city manager and being able to interact. 
um, as well as other employees that have um, that have said the same thing. They're rank and file. They're not management. They're just people that really enjoy their jobs. They've never seen so much done in a short period of time um, as we have now with our city manager. And I and I really, um, it's heartwarming to hear that. Um, he's not paid peanuts, but he's paid uh, to do a job and he's doing it well. Um, I just, uh, I wanna say thanks for the work that you're doing and that a lot of employees are really happy to get, it's a spring in their step when they feel like coming to work because they know somebody cares and we're seeing the work done. Uh, I still see a few areas where trees are not trimmed yet. Um, hopefully that will get done. I know one is right across from, uh, on Mercy Springs, across from the new credit union, which by the way, I think is beautiful and it really makes that corner um, look impressive. But there's one tree there where the kids cross, um, this cross 165 Mercy Springs and that tree to me, if anybody were to try to hide out in there, that could be bad news for the kids. And I think that tree needs to get trimmed. Um, other than that, um, just keep doing the good work. I also see that um, we're gonna see some progress tonight on the animal shelter, and I think that's fabulous. Um, you know, getting rid of those buildings there um, is so important, and we need to be able to shine um, a spotlight on our animals. Um, you know, they don't need to be dumped, but if they're gonna be carried there, I think that's a good thing. And also I saw something where um, if people are getting uh, uh, chits or whatever for spade or neutering, it probably makes more sense to have the um, veterinarian call for the chit, because otherwise who knows if these are being used and we don't need to waste that money on something that never gets done. Um, so I just wanted to thank you for the great job you're doing it's it's uh, it's really nice to see some uh, major activity going on and sometimes it might be small stuff but the small stuff do mat does matter in the end thank you and thank you good evening kathy yuley um i have a few things i'd like to talk about this evening um first is i would just like to reiterate something that was said a little earlier i would really love to see the city sign on to meet with the governor regarding the electric vehicle criteria that he has um set forth and perhaps try to get him to move that out some so that would be really awesome second of all um my main reason for being here is actually about the shelter i have some papers here I'd like to okay so it's really great that the shelter is getting going forward and we're doing something with it Levi Fistori with Feral Freedom has been working with the shelter very closely had a couple of suggestions regarding a surgical suite and um, has made a few changes to the um, shelter as it is currently planned um, it just has to do with creating a separate surgical suite and a medical exam room which is basically a requirement for having a surgical facility and then changing a couple of doors around removing a hall it just makes it a more practical long-term facility very minor changes i hope you all have a chance to take a look at it and maybe discuss it with levi or um, anybody else may be with UC Davis. I noticed that the UC Davis program had recently um, made some additions to the shelter. So it's super awesome. I mean, just really, really happy in, with the direction that we're going now in the city with the shelter. It's such a long time coming and it's great to see. Thank you guys. Whoever's doing anything to make this move forward i just thank you all very very much and i also especially want to thank levi who has made a massive difference and i know i said this at the last meeting but levi has literally changed the face of the problems that we were facing when i was just up here whining basically about the lack of resources for the cats and um completely different now 100 percent different thanks to feral freedom so I really appreciate that 
they have decided to work in our community. It's made a massive difference and it filled an incredible void. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention, and this is going to sound, uh, last meeting, a young woman came up and was speaking about electronic harassment. Um, oddly, about two weeks before that meeting, I had actually read some information about that from the UN Human Rights Organization. And um, I wasn't quite sure that that's what she was talking about because there was a little confusion whether it was cyberbullying or something different. And um, I did see that she had posted something on social media and had a brief opportunity to um, interact with her privately. And um, yeah, she was talking about actually the electronic harassment that was mentioned in the UN information that I was reading. Um, it sounds, you know, I think some people seemed on the social media, some people seem to think it was almost a joke. And um, if the UN is addressing this issue, I don't think it's a joke. I don't know what the situation is with her personally. I have no idea. But it is something that is real. And um, it's not something that we hear of every day. And my coming across it was very haphazard initially. And it was kind of strange that somebody else brought it up uh, couple of weeks later. So I don't know, just something if you guys happen to be interested, I'd be happy to share some information with you further. Um, I don't have any idea what level this plays in our community, if at all. Um, but the young woman who spoke did seem to think it did. So anyway, that's all. Yeah. And thank you very much. And thanks again. And I hope you all have a chance to take a look at the changes with the shelter. They're very minor, but super important. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kathy Ballard. Um, I had sent a message to councils and mayor, <clears throat> and I was asked to, <clears throat> in regards to um, how our agendas are, I was asked to go to other city council meetings and see how they run it, or to take a civics course. Well, I'm too old to go back to school, so that wasn't an option. So I did go to a school board meeting and I went to, I had the privilege to go last night to the city of Gustine City Hall meeting um, where they get to talk, the citizens get to talk on items. Um, our public forum, we we're allowed to speak and we we'll, won't get a response. And we, so we state our opinion and then we go sit down. Usually don't get any answers or information in regards to what we asked about. Um, your consent agendas items are, you know, I'm getting used to that. Um, but the agendized items, there's also no public forums. There's nothing for the citizens to stand up and give their information or ask questions or having a dialogue with their council. Um, you guys tell me that that's the law, that's how it has to be. But I'm not seeing that in other meetings that are controlled by I think you mentioned the Brown Act, and I don't think that has anything to do with how an agenda is written up. Um, citizens are allowed to talk at these other meetings and get information, answers to their problems, or who they can go to to solve their problem that they have a worry about. <clears throat> Here we talk, and to me, I feel it goes nowhere. Um, at Gustine, I also heard each department head, the fire and police chief, public works, park and various other employees who are the head department heads um, they gave an update which i thought was really amazing um, so they came up said what they were working on what problems they found um, what was going to go happen in the future and everything was out in the open i only hear about it in this city if it's posted or if we've already decided to spend a huge amount of money not knowing that there was a problem um, and so I'm concerned. I really liked when I went to the city of Augustine. Um, it, it was very open and answers were done. Um, here, I can't even call my city council member. I, I get no response. So I've given up, gave up a long time ago. I hear from Mr. Lampert, I hear from Deborah, and that's it. Um, Mr. Yanez will, or Mayor Yanez, will text me back, but that's it. Um, um, from 
Oh, now see, I lost my meeting. Um, I was thinking you guys have meetings with all of your department heads and they give you a report of what they're working on. Is there some way to post that in the agenda packet or to have them bring it up to a council meeting so that the citizens are aware of it? I want to be involved. Um, I was declined to be on a commission. I understand that. But what I'm concerned about is I can get no information now in regards to things. Um, not that people and staff don't call me back. They do when I have a precise question. But how can I do a question when I don't know what's going on? Um, thank you for your time. Just looking for more knowledge and what's going on in my city and not after the fact. Thank you. Dave Anderson, and I'd like to speak on item nine. Can I come up at that time, or do I need to speak now? Uh, you, you have your time at the moment uh, to, to speak now. Okay. My name is Dave Anderson, and uh, I'm with the I'm a resident of the city of Los Banos. Been here for a long time. I'm uh, semi-retired. Work with in the amateur radio emergency services group covering the city, as well as over 25 years, I'm a, a putting service in as a volunteer firefighter. Um, I'm coming before you to consider uh, not proceeding with the reduction of the Airport Advisory Commission meeting schedule. Currently, we meet monthly, uh, and as a group, we considered this a while, uh, some time back, uh, whether we wanted to reduce our meetings or whether to continue on a monthly meeting we felt it was wiser to keep as a monthly meeting. Uh, granted that we have short meetings, typically between five and 10 minutes long, but it, they're concise meetings. We go over basic reports uh, on uh, various inspections, such as coming from the FAA or Caltrans, and follow up on those inspections and the, the points that need to be corrected, as well as various project and repair uh, reports that get back to us. We also continually monitor the uh, budget status report and uh, the FAA grant funding for small airports. Uh, we keep close tabs on that because we actually have the benefit of doing carryovers on that and we like to be able to uh, make sure that uh, staff is on top of that and understand what the staff's plans are. Um, Having a uh, regular short uh, meetings again helps keep the, vote, the group focused and on track. If we meet quarterly every three months, you tend to lose what happened the last meeting. Uh, it's, it's just human nature. Sometimes you may even forget to meet, that you have a meeting. I know that in some of my groups that we have, where we have regular monthly meetings, if we, when we've cut them back or skipped a couple of months, people tend to forget. Uh, having it on a regular basis keeps people the pattern uh, going. And uh, that's basically what what I'd like you to consider when you uh, come to item number nine. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I agree with a lot of what's been said by others and definitely feel like <clears throat> things need to continue to be pursued. Um, as far as the animal shelter, I'm happy to see a new building being constructed. Um, I did hear the lady say it's nice to get rid of the buildings that are out there, plural. I think we're only getting one rid of one building and that's the trailer that is the office. I think the dog kennel is staying the same and the dogs will not be getting new kennels. They'll not be getting a new building. They'll not be getting anything different. So it's, a, it's too bad, you know, that that's the case. We're looking at a 1,440 square foot building, which is two times what they currently have. The current trailer is 12 by 60. They're looking at 24 by 60. I gave you a plan for 36 by 60 
that was six hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars and the rest of the money would be used for the um, the tear down the demolition and the site work and whatever but um, I don't know if what you're going to do tonight to approve what is budgeted and approve the BMI construction is saying yes that's exactly what we want or is that just yes you're going to do something for us and possibly there can be some changes at least at a bare minimum the changes that Levi Fistori from Feral Freedom suggested on the paperwork that you received the very the, the very least but um, hopefully you know you might be able to still get a better plan get a better plan that would incorporate the dog building I mean that thing is it's pretty pathetic if you ever have gone in there it's hard to even breathe it's it's just it's really really bad it stinks and it's very uncomfortable to be in so um, it'd be nice to incorporate something like that or wait till we get another million dollar windfall at some point in the future which is pretty sad so hope you'll consider that Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff, and public, police and fire, and our new city engineer. My name is Greg Hosteller, 923 Pacheco Boulevard. I'm here to speak to a few subjects and ask for your assistance in navigating some issues that are of great benefit and value to our city, job creation, housing shortage, and the homeless situation. North Point, one of our communities, the application was for entitlement originally submitted in 2015 and between 2015 and 2022, this application has been deemed complete three separate times deemed complete on 9-18-15 and 6-14-19 and 10-4-22. And with a new request to provide a traffic study which took 15 months. This project is in the northeast area of town near the high school at the end of Ward Road. It has incurred numerous delays due to several components of city staff turnover, particularly within the public works department where there have been at least five public works managers either full-time or interim during the 2019-2024 time period. Also, there has been a change in city managers at least four times during the time period of either full-time or interim as well. Neither of these positions have been long-term staffers holding the position. Other challenges calling delays at North Point's entitlement are due to the change in design requirements relative to traffic circulation, roundabout designs, site layout, grading concepts, cul-de-sac and street design changes, and the list goes on. These delay delays have significantly impacted this project. Options of both traditional and affordable housing elements for the city of Las Banas and our community. Presidential estates, annexation. This project is loaded behind the old state mark near the high school on 11th Street. This project was an annexation originally submitted in 2009, but has moved along and has done so due to changes in the market, staff changes, and other. It has been a very logical annexation within the area of circulation, public safety, future development for the housing element, aid in reducing homeless, beneficial to response time emergency services, including fire and police. Pioneer Ridge annexation along Pioneer Road between Center Avenue and Ortigalita. This project of an annexation has been in the queue for over 15 years. And it's time to move this project forward as well for the benefit of the city of Los Banos and also create jobs, supporting housing element, and again, reduce homelessness, affordability, and the housing shortage. The land has not been annexed for residential use in 20 years, and we are missing an opportunities for more job creation, all of the communities referenced above will greatly enhance the city's housing shortage and affordability and job creation. 
There are several items I'd like to reference regarding developer reimbursement due to be paid by the City of Los Banos, and just to name a few, the Shaughnessy Village Park, the city needs to purchase 2.3 acres of land to build the park. All the park fees have been paid for the homes in the community of approximately 1.2 million. Center Avenue improvements, the city's share of Center Avenue improvements is $241,313.71, and the improvements were complete over two years ago. One minute. The amount remains unpaid. Crest Hills Park, this park was completed over four years ago, and, it, and this too remains unpaid. I look forward to continuing to work with the City of Los Banos and its staff as we create revenue to create jobs. And as you know, we have donated sizable amounts over the years to numerous charities. To name a few, this includes donations to the Los Banos May Day Fair, and the latest was $250,000 for facility improvements so that the kids have a better facility to showcase their animals. Also donations to churches and schools, which we pay above state required fees, and our latest donation to the OLF Catholic School on Center Avenue in the amount of $250,000 for structure improvements that fell down. I want to thank the city council and staff in advance for their assistance and cooperation, the public and all the homeowners where we build. Time. And Josh, I think you can get it done. Time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to encourage everybody to look at the bright side. Uh, the city is making it difficult for developers to build new houses, making it difficult for businesses to bring in new jobs to the city, not doing anything about the homeless situation, not doing anything about the stray animals, but at least we're getting pickleball courts. At the January 3rd meeting, it was stated that there should be some absolute clarity on the small business assistance program within the next 45 days. It's been 49 days. I didn't start attending these meetings because of the newspaper or because I'm a follower of Deborah Lewis. I started attending because I emailed city staff a simple question about the small business assistance program that should have had a simple answer. But they refused to tell the truth. So I came here for help. But instead of helping, the council has done their best to cover for city staff. When this program was first approved, it was Marianas that suggested shortening the timeline for a report on this program from 12 down to six to seven months. Because in his words, as business owners, if you got a grant or a large sum of money, there'd be some strategic planning how you're spending it. Applications closed in May, that was nine months ago. But then, from a suggestion of six to seven months when this program is approved, 13 months later, he's saying businesses haven't had enough time to figure out how to spend the money. When this program was approved, Councilmember Jones stated, in case it's not all used up, I'd like to, if there's leftover funds, do a second funding cycle. There is money left over, left less money went out in grants than what the council allocated, but that money will be absorbed so pickleball courts can be built instead of helping businesses. Your actions, not your words, show your priorities, which do not include helping businesses in Los Banos, or as we can see, a lot of other things that residents have to deal with. There's a pattern here with saying one thing publicly and act in another way when nobody is looking. All I've been asking you to do for the past seven months is what you said you were going to do. Dated October 3rd from the city of Los Banos, attached, please find the updated Small Business Assistance Program closeout form. All forms must be submitted with backup documentation within 60 days of receipt of this letter. Closeout documentation from businesses was due by December 3rd, a month 
before using the excuse that there hasn't been enough time to receive closeout documentation. What's the excuse now that closeout documentation is nearly three months overdue? The longer you delay explaining how grant awards were determined, the guiltier you look. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Pro Tem, City Council, City Staff, residents of Los Panos. I'm Captain J.P. Soares. This is my co-part, Captain Eric Galicchio. We're here to talk to you guys about a couple community events that are coming up within our community that we strongly support. Our first event we'd like to talk to you about tonight is our Kids Day event. Uh, Kids Day is held on March 12th. I know that's a really short time, but here we go. Uh, throughout the Central Valley, volunteers will hit the streets selling a special edition of a paper that all proceeds go to uh, Central California, Central Valley, California uh, Hospital in Madera, California. This hospital is a fantastic hospital that we're so greatly uh, dear and near to both Eric and I, and we are so lucky to have it so close to us. Our nearest next hospital for children is in the San Jose area, Southern California, or Northern California. So we're so lucky to have this in our backyard. You'll see on uh, March 12th, volunteers will hit the streets. They'll start selling papers at 0600, and we'll end by 11 a.m. If you are wanting to volunteer to sell papers, you can sign up on Valley Children's website, select Site S. That'll go to Eric and I. Show up that morning at roughly 6 pick up your papers from Eric and I, and hit the streets selling papers. By 11 a.m., bring us back your money, and we will take care of the rest. We'll make sure that that money gets turned into Valley Children's Hospital. So we look forward to um, volunteering, or you guys volunteering. Second event is our annual pancake breakfast at your local fire department. Uh, this is held at fire station number one, February 24th. That's this Saturday. The event will be held from 0800 to 11 a.m. The cost is $7 for adults and, um, let's see, I'm sorry, $10 for adults and $7 for children under the age of 12. You can go and buy your tickets online on our Facebook um, page through the City of Los Banos Fire Department. Just click the link and it'll direct you on how to buy your ticket online or you can buy the tickets at the door. Uh, we look forward to seeing everyone, including um, citizens of Los Banos at this event. Uh, <clears throat> proceeds from that event will go to specialized trainings for your local firemen uh, to send us to trainings to buy new equipment for our fire engines, uh, things to that nature. So it's a great event. Our third event is our Fill the Boot for Burns. Um, fill the Boot for Burns. This is an event that will be held March 30th at the corner of Pacheco Boulevard and Mercy Springs Road from 7 a.m. to roughly noon, weather depending. Last year we got rained out, but within a couple hours we did it, we made over uh, $60,000 for a little Los Manos, so that's fantastic. Um, the money raised from this event will go to the Burn Foundation, which um, helps burn survivors, not only firemen, but kids and family members that have burned in, been burned in um, structure fires. And so um, not only structure fires, but you know different burn accidents um, so it's a it's a great cause um, and that event is co-chaired with our local merced county cal fire fire department rigs ambulance service um, and like i said that'll be march 30th from 7 a.m to noon our fourth event held within the city of los banos I was fortunate enough to be sent down to Clovis, California by Chief Tuala at the middle of last year to become the first ever City of Los Banos firefighter certified in car seat safety. Um, this event is near and dear to my heart. I feel that safety of our children is priority within not only Los Banos, but within the state of California and our community. So with this event, we are Proud to, event, uh, proud to say that we've had a significant couple donors, Walmart and our local Elks Lodge, that have been great donors um, donating car seats to our event. 
This is not, I want to stress, this is not a free car seat giveaway. This is what we call a car seat inspection. The community will drive through the, the morning of April 21st, that is a Sunday, from 0900 to 1 p.m. You'll have your car seat inspected for proper fit, um, proper fit and uh, safety you know concerns within that car seat make sure that the buckles are all buckling straps are are not frayed or broken and that event's going to be held at the corner of fourth and f street here in the city of los banos that event also will be partnered with local community groups um, within our city like memorial hospital uh, chp and events and uh, people like that so uh, I look for look forward to everybody coming out to our local events that we have coming up. This isn't the last you'll see of us. We'll be back before Kids Day, probably at your next meeting, and then also before our next couple of events. So look forward to seeing everybody come out. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening, council and staff. Maribel Garcia speaking on behalf of uh, Los Banos Downtown Association. Uh, just a quick update, actually, we're having our merchant meeting tomorrow, uh, February 22nd at 5.30 at Biggins Texas Barbecue. So please go, 609 I Street. It's really important that the merchants do show up. Uh, the Downtown Association really wants to know what the merchants think and what they want. So it's extremely important that the merchants show up. Because, like I said, I can't express enough how the Downtown Association generally needs the merchant's help. So with that being said, look out for March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. We will be having a pub crawl. So really excited about that. Um, so overall, thank you so much and have a great evening. And I just have a little information for you guys. Our newsletter is out and then just our sponsorship book. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have anyone else? I see no one else. We'll co close the public forum and move on to our next item. Consideration of approval of consent agenda item. We'll turn to city clerk. Items on the consent agenda are as follows. Warrant numbers 243181 through 243776 in the amount of $1,490,249.67. Minutes for the February 7th, 2024 City Council meeting. City Council resolution number 6732, approving payment of the invoice claim filed by the Central California Irrigation District for $65,401.98 related to the Crest Hills sewer spill. City Council Resolution Number 6733, authorizing the application and acceptance of San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District Public Benefit Grant Programs funds for the purchase of five hybrid vehicles. City Council Resolution Number 6734, approving a boundary map and declaring its intention to annex property to the City of Los Banos Community Facilities District Number 2002-01 Public Safety Services and to levy a special tax therein to finance certain public safety services for such Community Facilities District, Quail Meadows, village, Villages at Stone Creek 5, Vesting Tentative Track Map 2021-01 located in the southwestern portion of the city and is generally located south of West Pacheco Boulevard, west of Dock Avenue, and east of the city limit line. City Council Resolution Number 6735, authorizing the city manager to execute the contract with BMY Construction Group, Inc. for the phase one construction of the animal shelter building in the amount of $902,102 and authorizing a project con 
contingency of $90,210.20. City Council Resolution Number 6736, approving the acceptance of a State of California tobacco grant administered through the County of Merced in the amount of $273,150 and amending the 2023-2024 fiscal year budget by increasing the appropriation amount for expenditures and revenues in the amount of $273,150. City Council Resolution Number 6737, authorizing the City Manager to execute an agreement between the City of Los Banos and Park Environmental for Asbestos and Lead Abatement Services at 535 J Street, Police Annex in the amount of $163,440. And the items are to be approved as submitted. Uh, thank you. Now I move to council to see if any items uh, need to be discussed for a separate vote. Ms. Lewis. Thank you. I'd like to pull item uh, 7C as in Charles. Um, item number 7F as in Frank, and item 7H as in Harry for a separate uh, separate discussion and vote. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we'll start with item C, and we'll turn to City Attorney Mr. Vaughn. Uh, yes, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, as we all recall, there was a sewer line break in the Crest Hills area at the beginning of last year, that break took considerable manpower by the city of Los Banos as um, the sewer break ended up um, spilling into the CCID main canal. Um, significant manpower was spent by the city of Los Banos in partnership with CCID to clean up that spill, uh, which uh, com comprised of actually the physical part of uh, damming up the CCID canal, dewatering the canal, um, and all the things that went with making sure that the contaminated water did not make it through their system to their growers. Uh, CCID, in partnership with the city, uh, expended uh, significant man hours and mm, uh, expenses on their own, and they've submitted the city with a claim that's for your consideration tonight. Um, the claim itself has been forwarded to our insurer for our pollution insurance and is being considered for payment by them. Um, we've been we've had this claim for approximately eight or nine months and we felt that uh, since our insurance uh, has not resolved the claim up to now it was prudent to move forward and to go ahead and take care of CCID as our partner in this. Um, they will be signing a release uh, to the city upon full payment of the itemized items that are in their claim um, and invoice. And I can answer any questions that you might have. Uh, and just as an aside note, the former uh, city engineer, public works director was aware of this claim and in my discussions with him, he felt that all of the expenses that were outlined in the invoice were fair and reasonable. Okay, thank you for your interpretation. Um, and, I, I, and I heard you say that there is going to be a release once this is paid uh, from CCID. I assume that uh, that release will be uh, for no further claims, uh, be it in court or submitting bills to the city of Los Banos for the damages incurred for services and, and whatever else uh, they lost in, in funding. Now, the submitting to our insurance company, did I understand you to say that they have not paid on it? at this time or are they refusing to pay? No, there's the significant claims that the city of Los Banos has itself with the insurer. I think they exceed a half a million dollars um, in terms of all of the expenses outlaid by the city to um, remediate the damages and to 
keep the spill from becoming a bigger problem. We are working through the process with our own insurer to deal with that claim. Um, it's been a, created a significant amount of paperwork and backup documentation to get to the point where we are now. And I think it's in their claims adjusting department and we do not anticipate that they are going to approve every one of our claims, but they are working through that. And the CCID is a claim as part of that. Okay, so actually we're, you know, with whatever we, uh, this council may approve tonight, we're really not actually done with this claim. Oh no, there's, um, we have significant issues that um, we're gonna be dealing with our insurer um, in terms of uh, the spill and um, working through it and seeing if we can come to a resolution on our claim. Okay, so. Um, we didn't feel that it was appropriate that we were holding up CCID from being made whole from this incident um, uh, while we were trying to resolve it with our own insurer. So that's that's why we're moving it forward. Okay, so the <clears throat> the sixty five thousand dollars, and I'm just trying to make this clear in my head, is just for uh, the immediate claims that CCID is making to us right now. But there could be up to a half a million or more in claims that come to the city. No, no, that's not what I said. CCID has a claim against the city for the sixty five thousand. The city of Los Banos expended uh, a half a million to three quarters of a million dollars remediating the damage to that canal ourselves. That's our claim against our own insurer. That's the claim that we are resolving with our own insurance company. There is no third party claims um, against the city of Los Banos other than the CCID claim at this present time. Okay, so I understand that now. So. This claim with CCID is the end of what they will come to us for as far as uh, any claims. And the rest of uh, the claim with our insurance company is our out-of-pocket expense for uh, for the damages done. And yeah, what we, we, had, had to do. we had significant expenses of our own um, creating, uh, we had to create the new pipeline. We had to dam up the CCID canal. We had significant expenses with third parties to do all of that in a, a very short period of time. We have uh, a number, we hired a number of experts uh, to make sure that we had done what we needed to do to clean up the CCID canal so that there were no um, damages to their growers. This, this release will only go to the CCID claim. It doesn't go to their growers. If their growers were to have any claims, but we it's been a year. We haven't heard of any grower uh, that might have a claim. So uh, we're pretty uh, confident that we're not gonna see any more third party claims at this point. So is there any statute of limitations for the growers to come against the city? Yeah, I think it probably is a three year statute of limitation for crop damage, for instance. But part of this claim, if you'll notice, was for um, moving 500 acre feet of water out of the system that would have eventually made it to their growers. And so that's a big part of this claim. I think it's roughly $45,000. Mm -hmm. And so the city and CCID worked together to make sure that that contaminated water didn't make it into their irrigation system. And we're pretty confident that it did not make it worse, but um, nothing is ever certain in this world. So um, if the insurer pays the claim for the city's losses, will that be brought back to the council so that we know what was paid out? Um, I'm thinking that it'll be a, comp a compromised claim so that uh, in order to accept that, I don't think staff has the authority to do that. So I'm certain that we would bring it back to the city council. All right, thank you. Thank you. Do you want to go ahead and vote on this one? 
said for a separate vote or are you just added into the consent? Um, you can check with the, the uh, our city attorney on how to handle that. Do you want to do a separate vote or go away the consent? Uh, I would go through the other two items that got pulled okay. and then decide what right. you want to do. Well, let's move on to F. And that will go to Police Chief Rayner. Thank you, Chief. Um, in reading the report, it you know it shows that um, there were there was a proposal back in 2022, um, but this current one I think that we're looking at now is um, was advertised for bids in December of last year, and the bid proposal came through. There was one company. Um, I wasn't able to even figure out what the schematic looked like, the rendition on the back page, because it was way too small. But um, my concern on this project is not that we don't need it, but historically in our community, when we have projects that are coming forward, uh, showing some, a significant change, such as our community center, uh, when we had our police department built, uh, when we worked on our new animal control ordinances, uh, we always had public hearings on our animal control ordinance. When we re redid those, we had three public uh, uh, meetings to allow the people in the community to have input into what those uh, ordinances were going to look like. So basically, um, what I'm asking for is that this council perhaps put this off for one more month. I don't think that's going to make a big difference and have um, public input so that the public can meet and set a date and a time so that the public can come out, uh, look at this, and anyone that, you know, we have one, that uh, a suggestion that was brought to us tonight, but there may be some other suggestions uh, based on what's here. Um, you know, I heard one public member indicate that uh, not only that there was another uh, idea submitted where the square footage was much larger, that included, I would assume, some shelter for uh, the dogs in their kennels. I'm not sure. But I just think that we need to be fair to the community uh, who have concerns about this new shelter that's going to be constructed. And with the limited amount of resources that have been provided to have some input and to find, you know, find out if legally we're doing everything we need to do in regards to the shelter. So, I mean, that's that's not anything really that um, you can make a comment on unless you have one. But I think it's more to the council to make a decision to just put this off for another month and schedule a meeting so that the public can come forth and have some input into this new shelter that's being constructed for our, for our animals and for our community. Thank you, Council Member. Anybody else want to make a comment? On this animal shelter, I kind of look at this as a, a remodel, not a completely new one, just because it's we're working within our existing footprint uh, without trying to overcomplicate it. When we overcomplicate it, probably add on another year before we start. Um, an all new animal shelter, I think the estimates were close to like 11 or 13 million. I don't think there's any way we're gonna be able to come up with that. So we have to do something. I mean, this is, we, we can't wait any longer. I mean, it's 20 years overdue for a remodel. So we have to start somewhere. That's all. All right. So my uh, input is basically the same as Mr. Jones. It. Uh, how long have you guys been coming? <laughs> uh, if uh, we we've already sent out for the design, this is a design that we got back right now. We've got. We need to start. This is not the finished item. Uh, you know, things change as we go, just like it did with the police station. Uh, 
right now, I feel we need to start, we need to get a jump on this now um, and, and start taking care of the issues that we have over there. Uh, I heard someone say that the dog kennels, uh, from what I understand, the dog kennels are going to get kind of revamped on the inside a little bit, uh, from what I understand. They're not going to be the same. So, but And I th believe we just got new seven new kennels with uh, roofs out there for the dogs. Um, I, I, I feel we need to move forward to start getting something done for the, I mean, we're getting into the summertime that's coming. Uh, and I believe if, just like Mr. Jones said, if we had to move it forward, it'd be another year before we got start getting anything done. Um, I don't recall for the police station, for the, uh, did we have, did we have that for the police station for the workshop? I don't remember having a workshop for the public. Uh, I believe perhaps we did have one yeah. at the community yeah. center. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So, but uh, for this one, you know, we're moving forward. I, I, I feel I'm going to make, uh, we'll move forward. I don't believe we need to put this off any longer. We need to get this system going. Uh, I mean, we've sat here, we've been, why put it, you guys have come here over a year now, and we need to start doing something now. Yeah. And so we need to start doing something now. So anybody else? Yeah, my light is on. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Lewis. Thank you. Um, well, you know, this is typically what we hear from our council is that we need to move forward. And the community has been coming out for a long time about this shelter. And they've not had the opportunity to have a public meeting to even speak to their concerns about what would be built, what would be included, what would the amenities be. You're being told that this is what you're going to get and like it or not. So I think, I think it's unfair. One month is not a lot of time for people to have a meeting and to come back 30 days later and see if there's any additional input or any changes that need to fit inside of this footprint. Uh, if there are some legal things that we need to do uh, in regards to um, the surgery suite, I don't know anything about that. I'm just saying we need to allow the public to have a say and to vet out whether or not those issues are true and correct and to bring the evidence of it. 30 days is not a lot of time, but typically this is, this is what I've been seeing here at, at council meetings is that things are foisted down the public's throat and you get what you get without any say uh, as to how your tax dollars are being spent. And I think that's totally wrong. We, we, the years that I've been on council, when we have changes like this, the public is entitled to input on what's being done. And I think we need to give them that entitlement. And that's all that I'm going to say. Okay, Mr. Jones, go ahead. Yeah, do we have any outside uh, expertise on the layout of the animal shelter? Uh, the layout was um, designed uh, by staff internally. Staff that works it, that uses it, that operates in there? Correct. Okay. Um, one thing I will share with the public is, I know you guys are experts in your field. At some point, you won't be here, and there'll be another set of experts that may want it a different way, and so forth, so on. That's just how it is. You talk to three different attorneys, you get three different opinions on the same subject, and they all feel they're right. Same thing in my profession and everywhere else. We just got to start going forward because I remember my first three years on here, we would talk to plan, plan to plan, but we never got anything done. We we're just a bunch of bureaucrats, tired of it. So now we got the ability to get things done. We got staff that's kicking butt. And we're going to get done. That's it. We can always improve it later on if it doesn't meet our needs, but we need to try it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I want to move on to the next item, item H. Thank you, Chief. And this item will go to community and economic development. Ms. Souza. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem um, and Council. Council Member Lewis, do you have any questions? Just give me a second to look at my notes. Thank you. Okay, my first question is um I see there were four um four companies that uh submitted an RFP, if I'm correct on this. Mm -hmm. But only one was chosen. Um, 
What was the deciding factor for choosing the PARC environmental company? So based on the uh, request for proposal, um, Exhibit B outlined how proposals were going to be evaluated, um, which starts on page 165 of um, the agenda packet. Um, and that evaluation criteria is then weighted and that weight score is on page 167 of the agenda packet. And then based on that weight score, the highest proposer um, is, um, um, then we open their sealed cost schedule and then we negotiate with that um, top proposer based on receiving the top score. Um, and if we don't come to an agreement with that top score, uh, then we would go to the next you know, second score. But in this case, uh, we were able to su successfully negotiate with the top score, which was park environmental. Okay. And, and when I looked at these uh, proposal evaluation of objectives, they're, to me, they're all, they're all objective. You know, it, it's, it's like uh, project management. It'll, it'll give you an outline of what you want team um, is managed by an individual who qualifies, blah, 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 blah. But I think the point that I'm trying to get to is I, I don't know that we ha have expertise in our city about um, asbestos and lead abatement. It, it, was there something that helped us outside of these qualifications on how you want to pick a company that led you to pick this company mm -hmm. over any other one because of their expertise in this? Was there something about our building uh, that our staff evaluated to decide that this company was better than another company? So the RFP outlines the scope and that um, is weighted as a part of the quality of the proposal um, as well as the completeness of the proposal. Um, so that all goes into a part of that evaluation. Um, and then staff, um, the evaluation committee um, is based of um, experts, one of which was an inspector um, that is knowledgeable in this area, but the RFP is very straightforward in the criteria that um, was needed as well as the scope and based on those criteria, that is how the top proposer was evaluated. Okay, so I assume this inspector is someone within our city mm -hmm. and um, all of these companies have a lot of different points that they were looking at. I'm assuming some companies looked at things differently than the company that we chose. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly I don't, I don't know anything about, um, you know, inspecting for any of these things, but the, there, there were a lot of uh, points that were evaluated in regards to paint, um, uh, stairways, bathrooms, lobby. Um, so I, I would assume that um, that these companies had to provide something additional to you in, in your interviewing process to determine whether or not the points that were brought out, you know, if they have to take out sheetrock or mm -hmm. what have you, because there's, a be you know, asbestos there, where the lead might be, mm -hmm. um, whether it's in tiles, on the floor, in the ceiling, what have you. Um, and and I, I, I was trying to make that connection based on your qualifications of hiring a company um, with looking at those specific areas that have to be evaluated. So that, that was the reason why I questioned, you know, how did we come to this point uh, based on just the proposal evaluation, which are uh, things that the city has set up um, that are, are objective and not specific to, you know, how they look at things. So still not clear on that, but um, that, that was the big question I have is there had to be something else 
other than just what's outlined on that piece of on those papers for these this one company it is to to be evaluated to be the best company of the four that was chosen and i and i have to you know trust staff that you know they were uh, knowledgeable enough to do this but you know i just wasn't finding anything in the report that led me to that um so that that was that was basically uh, what I wanted to clarify on um, the choosing of this company. So that that's okay. it. I, okay. I, I don't think my question's been answered clearly enough. Mr. Joe. Oh. Um, you know, it, <clears throat> if if I had to choose someone and I had lead in my house or uh, asbestos, uh, and I'm evaluating companies. It's like, you know, company A tells me, well, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then company B tells me I'm going to do this, this, and this. Uh, I probably would have to hire another expert to tell me what does all of that mean. And, and I'm hoping that the inspector within, within our city has enough expertise to make sure that this building is going to be safe. Because we've, we've had staff in there for a very long time. Um, that has been exposed to all these contaminants. And that building, uh, I, I remember when it was a bank and I think when the city took it over, it was in the late nineties. So it's, it's been a while that, you know, our employees have been exposed to asbestos and to lead. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Yeah, I actually know quite a bit about asbestos and lead based paint removal. And it's, it's actually pretty simple. It's demolition. You go through, you find the areas that need to be demoed. Any of these companies, if they have the certification, they can probably do the job. Um, especially if they're applying for a city right. job, they, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. As far as exposure, as long as the lead base paint is encapsulated with, say, newer paint, or the asbestos has not been broken up and in the air, mm -hmm. it's fine. There's actually worse things in these buildings than those two things believe it or not, but they're not as political. So this is pretty simple and straightforward demo work. So. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, Ms. List, is there any one of these three that you would like for a separate vote? Um, at this particular time, I would want um, Mr. Jones to Okay, so uh, at this time uh, on item F, uh, I'll take a motion for resolution number 6735. Mr. Jones? Yes, Mayor, I'd like to approve uh, consent agenda item uh, F. F, resolution number 6735, estimated. Do I, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Bergoglio? I'm going to abstain from this vote, not because I disapprove of, of what's the, the money that's being put out there for uh, the building of this uh, new shelter, but for the mere fact that I think uh, the community needs to have input to what's going on with this. They've been asking for it for a long time. No one up here has given them an answer. And I've made a, you know, a, a small suggestion of one month, and that's been denied. and set aside so I'm going to abstain from the vote. Okay, Ms. Lewis, can you call a uh, vote, please? All right. Oh, Ms. I'm sorry, Ms. Lucy, yes. Okay. Um, Lambert? Yes. Begonia? Yes. Jones? Yes. Lewis? Yanez? Okay. Item F has passed. Resolution 6735 with four yeses and one abstain. Ms. Lewis, abstain. Well, three yeses. One, three yeses and one abstain. And the mayor is absent. Okay, we'll now move to item seven, seven with item F removed and already voted on to approve the rest of the consent agenda item. And I'll make a, take a motion. Mr. Jones? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem, I'd like to approve the consent agenda minus item F. Do I have a second? 
Mr. Begonia? Second. All in favor? Aye. No nose. The consent judgment is passed. Now we'll move on to item eight. This is going to be a public hearing. If you challenge the proposed action as described here in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described herein or in written correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public hearing. This is going to be item A, public hearing, to receive public comment and consideration of a categorical exemption from the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and conditional use permit number 2037-07 to allow the use of type 41 alcohol license on the sale of beer and wine for Premier Cinema Los Banos located within the Highway Commercial Zoning District at 245 Mercy Springs Road, APN number 025-121-022. And we'll turn to the community, community Economic Development, Ms. Susa Elms. Thank you again, Mr. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Council. Um, so this item before you is for a conditional use permit for Premier Cinemas. Uh, just some background on this particular item. Um, it was heard at a public hearing on July 26 at the Planning Commission um, where they recommended approval of conditional use permit 2023-07 to the Las Vegas City Council. Uh, this particular uh, business has been in operation for over 20 years um, at its location. Uh, the proposal before you tonight um, is consideration for a conditional use permit um, which is required per the Las Vegas Municipal Code for any business um, requesting uh, the use of alcohol. Uh, they are requesting for a Type 41 alcohol license. This is for the on sale of beer and wine for an eating establishment. Um, ABC licenses are regulated by the California Department of Alcohol Beverage Control, ABC, and the proposed days and hours of operation are Wednesday through Sunday from 11 a.m. until 12 a.m. I'm sorry, no, that should be um, seven days a week from 11 a.m. to midnight. Uh, the location is 245 Mercy Springs Road. Um, it's highlighted for you in yellow in the aerial. Um, this is the Premier Cinema Plaza, um, which um, not only houses the theater, but also houses, um, consists of other commercial uses, um, such as restaurants, um, urgent care facilities, uh, title companies and various other ancillary commercial uses. According to CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act, this project has been deemed categorically exempt per Article 19, Section 15301 in that it is an existing facility and an expansion of the floor plan is not proposed at this time. Uh, the use permit analysis, the Los Banos Municipal Code has specific criteria and findings for um, any request for a use permit. And then an additional ha addition has specific findings for the on sale of alcohol, um, all of which those findings are within the staff report. And if there are any questions, I can go over them. Um, but the, those are our standard findings. And again, the issuing authority is the state of California, the alcohol beverage control um, department. Uh, this is the census tract, uh, census tract map for Los Banos. This particular project is located in census tract 22.01. I do want to note for the council, this is a new uh, census tract map. Uh, you may recall that the city was uh, divided into essentially four quadrants historically. And with the new census, the 2020 census, the city now has eight census tracts uh, based on our population growth. This um, currently there are 15 on sale active licenses in census tract 22.01, which also consists of uh, a lot of Pacheco Boulevard as well as our downtown area. Uh, this is the floor plan and security plan for uh, the theater. And um, the sales of alcohol will be at the concession stands um, and the um, security cameras are highlighted in red on the floor plan. Um, and this is a photo of the exterior of the theater and a photo in the interior at the concession stands. 
Public comment, public hearing notices were published in the Merced Sunstar and mailed to adjacent property owners on February 9th, 2024. And as of today's date, no comments have been received. So staff is requesting that the city council adopt resolution number 6738, finding the proposed project to be categorically exempt from CEQA and approving conditional use permit number 2023-07 to allow for the on sale of beer and wine under a type 41 alcohol license for Premier Cinemas, uh, Los Banis, located at 245 Mercy Springs Road. And that concludes my report. All right, thank you. Uh, any questions up here for now? Well, okay. at this time, we'll open up to the public. Hello, I'm Patricia McCoy. Um, it's my personal opinion that the movie theater should not be serving beer and alcohol. I'm not saying that I don't partake in having a beverage. Um, I just don't think the movie theater is a prudent place for that to be served. There's, it's supposed to be a family location. Um, you have under, so many underage kids going there. And I just am really concerned on how something like that is going to be policed, taking it into the movie theaters that based on that photo those security cameras are in the lobby area it's not showing how how it's going to keep alcohol being from being dispersed from someone who's maybe just barely 21 to underage um, i also am really surprised and disappointed that somebody from premier cinemas is not here speaking as to why they think that this would be beneficial why they're pushing for it um, i just really I'm not a fan of doing this. And as far as an eating establishment, um, I think it's hot dogs and nachos there. Um, you know, if you want to have an alcoholic beverage before or after going to the movie theater, um, I'm just not a fan of this and I don't want to see it passed. Thank you. If I may clarify, okay. there is a representative right. from uh, the applicant here. Kathy Uli. Um I also am not um, a fan of the alcohol being served at the theater. Um, I'm speaking as public citizen right now, but across the board, I do not think this is a good idea. This is a family venue. There is a lot of dark space in there where there is absolutely zero way to monitor who's drinking alcohol. Um, I know this is a popular feature at some cinemas throughout the state. I, I hope we don't see that happen here in our community. This theater does not, to the best of my knowledge, most of the movies that play here are family movies. I suppose if the theater perhaps were showing foreign cinema and things like that, that there could be a case made for it. I just really don't see it other than I, I don't think it's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. I would definitely second that. I can't believe it's even being considered, but yeah, the, the dark interior. Who's going to watch who's drinking the alcohol once it's inside there? It, it's, it's not possible. There's too many kids in there, and we don't need kids going and watching a movie, drinking alcohol, and getting outside and driving home. So I would be against it. Thank you. Would one of you gentlemen like to... Step up and say a few words. Good evening, Council, Honorable Council Members. I'm Richard Scagliotti, uh, part of Premier Cinemas. Um, as you know, it's been a struggle since the pandemic. We were shut down. We weren't, you know, we were literally put out of business. So it's been a, it's been a struggle coming, trying to come back. And this is, this project is something that's been going on statewide, nationwide, as just one other way to try and raise revenues. You know, we're not here to have people or children drink beer. You know, we're going to be responsible. If a child or somebody is served in a trial, we're going to get the license removed. We'll be fine. So that's not our goal. Our goal is just trying to keep the business afloat and move forward. Um, you know, we're going to instruct our managers to make sure that, you know, no children are exposed to alcohol. Um, to me, it's no different than sitting down in a restaurant. If 
you take your if you take your family to a restaurant and dad wants to have a cocktail or mom wants to have a cocktail i don't understand the difference between you exposing your children to alcohol so i mean it, it's your call it's your city uh, we're just asking for consideration for this because it is something that's been going on statewide and nationwide and we're not doing hard hard alcohol we're just doing beer and wine as something for the adults if they would like to have that along with their hot dog or whatever you know the piece of pizza uh, we're here for any comments or questions appreciate it thank you i'm anna mccauley i get so friggin tired of people talking about the covid pandemic and all this crap that happened that's uh, better than two years ago and we've had time to kind of get things simmered down reset and move on but to blame everything on the covid and we've got we've got to do this stuff i agree with everybody that's spoken alcohol doesn't belong in that theater it probably belongs in very few theaters because they're dark and i have yet to see and i'm not a moviegoer my husband is but i have never seen staff in any movies perusing around checking things out and i don't think it's going to be any different my husband's been in there when there's probably only two or three people total in one theater and maybe there's just all adults or maybe there's a family with kids and he's you know, and my husband is the other adult that's not associated with him but that's what he sees i just think that to make up income issues with beer and wine beer and wine can be pretty could be pretty devastating if you're drunk and who's going to keep somebody you know if somebody gets injured it's just a little friggin late to pull the the, the license the company you know the business could shut down for sure if something happened but i just think that we have better ways to um bring family entertainment in to any uh to uh, uh into the movies or whatever without having to introduce alcohol to go with it um there's no way that anybody is going to peruse what goes on in each building or in each um in each theater it just it's just reality they barely have enough people to to handle the people behind the handle the the orders behind the, the um concession stand and I, I just think this is um preposterous thank you just because i just want to say yeah in response the managers at the theater yeah my my niece used to work at the theater when she was 16. so i don't know if there are adult managers who are going to be responsible for keeping their eye on things or is it going to be the 16 year olds policing the other 16 year olds so we'll comment on that anybody else miss okay so i'm gonna uh, go ahead mr jones if you got because i'm gonna go ahead legal age to uh, serve alcohol That'd be 18. 18. 18. Okay, so there'd have to be an 18 year old or older there serving alcohol for one. Uh, I actually appreciate the uh, Premier Cinemas for coming forward and trying to adjust to some of the losses they have. I'll, I'll admit it. I used to go to movies all the time. When COVID came around, I stopped going. Why? It's easy for me to get them on TV. So I just never went back. Um, but sometimes in business, you do have to adjust your business strategy and your model and to cope with times. Now, this is our only movie theater in town. So I can only imagine if things are getting tough, what it would be like with no movie theater in town. So this is what I say with all businesses. If you have a good concept, a good model, people like it, you're going to stay in business. If you don't, you're not going to stay in business. So we offer the conditional use permit. You give it a shot. If it works. You'll be successful. We keep a movie theater. If not, we lose a movie theater. It's that simple. We don't have to have a hefty debate up here about it. And realistically, family atmosphere, look at Chili's. They serve a lot of alcohol. There's kids in there. I mean, it's, it's really no different. I mean, it's a movie theater. Yes, the lights are dim. But it's up to the applicant 
to manage that because it's their liability, their insurance. A drunk coming out of the movie theater is no different from a drunk coming out of Chili's or any other bar. The liability is still there. So it's up to the applicant that is putting out the risk, that is putting in long hours to figure it out and make it work. We're just providing the opportunity. Simple. All right. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, I myself, uh, I, and I'm sure all you guys know that, you know, I already went through this process. So ABC still has to do their process. Uh, and uh, so it, it's a little bit more strenuous than ours. Uh, and there are certain guidelines. There are certain classes that these people that have to take, you know, because we're worried about, you know, uh, if someone can come in with a fake ID. So all, they understand this going through with this conditional permit. And I've actually spoke to a couple of the premier over in San Jose area and one in Morgan Hill. Uh, at this time, there hadn't been no issues. Uh, I, you know, because I reached out because I've had a couple questions from the, some of my people that call me. So I did a little bit of research. Uh, it is uh, over 80% of the theaters over in San Jose all sell beer and wine. Uh, it is a conditional permit, like he was just saying. Uh, it's a trial. If it brings in, it's no different for me. And, you know, I hear, I understand the COVID issue. I'm still trying to get back on our feet from the COVID. So everybody still is. So, I, you know, I apologize, but it's still an issue. I, I uh, uh, you know, like Mr. Jones said, if it works, it works great. If it brought in revenue with no issues, I'm sure we're going to be keeping close eye. Uh, <laughs> to, I mean, a couple of issues, you know, we have the right to, to revoke it. But we hope it that, you know, we can move forward and, I'll, you know, for us to give you guys a chance if it brings in new revenue. I first was not a, uh, a fan of it. The first person I called was the manager. I said, hey, I don't like it. But I did some research on it, and it was some of the issues about, you know, young age inside the theater. So, and it's going to be it, their process, when they process, when they go this, they'll have a floor plan on how, when they're serving, and how it's going to be monitored up inside the movie theaters. Uh, because, they're, I mean, they're going to have to monitor it. I mean, because that's, I mean... They're liable for everything. So, uh, uh, but the, I, I see where they're coming from, trying to, uh, I go by the movie theaters quite often, and I see it blank. So, you know, if this is some way it's just like me, I try to bring in more revenue anyhow I can get it. So if this is a process, you know, if they want to try the conditional permit, see where ABC takes it, you know, I, we, you know we can give them that opportunity. And like I said, it's basically on them after that. So that's all I have to say. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else in the public? We'll shut down the public forum and we'll move to item one of A1, the City Council Resolution number 6738, finding the proposed project to be categorically exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act pursuant to section 15301 and approving conditional use permit. 2023-07 to allow the on sale of beer and wine conjunction with an eating place for Premier Cinemas Los Banos located at 245 Mercy Springs Road. And I'll take a motion. Mr. Jones? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem, I'd like to make a motion to approve City Council Resolution number 6738 as submitted. A second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any noes? Uh, so we have three no, three yeses and one no from Council Member Lewis. Uh, the item passes. So we'll move on to item nine. Consideration of adoption of ordinance number 1204, amending title two, chapter two, article five, section 2-2.510 of the Los Banos Municipal Code to change the meeting dates and times of the Los Banos Airport Advisory Commission from monthly meetings to a quarterly meetings. And we'll go to Public Works Director, City Engineer, Mr. Chuck Bergeson. Mayor, members of council, um, uh, I believe Mr. Um, <coughs> Carlos is gonna make the presentation. I'm uh, new to the city. 
Okay. All right. Good evening, uh, uh, council members, pro tem, city uh, manager, city staff, and uh, public. Um, so um, here, uh, currently, the city of Los Angeles Municipal Code provides that the airport commission, airport advisory commission, meet monthly on the third Tuesday of each month at 5 p.m. here at the city council chambers. City staff has evaluated the need for this commission to meet on a monthly basis and have concluded that the volume of business does not warrant for the meetings to be monthly. There's not enough activity that occurs at the airport that staff would need to discuss or update the commission on a monthly basis. In addition, the duration of most meetings are 15 minutes long that staff spends, the staff spends a minimum of an hour to prepare. Uh, last year in 2023, there were only three commissioners the whole year, leaving two vacancy spots. By making, the, by making the meetings quarterly, there may, there may be more interest to fill these positions since, it's, since it would be a less, less of a commitment. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Do I have any questions? Uh, Mr. Jones? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys would know offhand, in the last 12 months, how many cancellations has there been on the monthly meetings? We have had... Um, you don't have to just estimate. It's been about, about four. Four? Yeah. Okay. So 25%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's all the questions I have okay. right now. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Uh, at this time, then, uh, if I have no more questions, yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead and make a motion to, for the consideration of the ordinance number 1204 for amending Title II, Chapter 2, Article 5, Section 2.2 510. And this one needs an actually act, waiving, waiving the first. Right. Yeah. So we'll waive the first uh, ordinance uh, number 1204. Well, I need another comment. And Mr. Oh. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, I do uh, hear you on monthly as a kind of having a routine. Um, un unfortunately, it, it's very difficult when we're in a kind of get it done mode, when we're we're trying to get staff lined up and when we derail them for something that is maybe, um, what's the number one thing that we discuss on the airport uh, commissions? Fuel? Fuel. Fuel. Operations. Something simple I mean there might be other discussions but we got to operate as efficiently as possible we got rid of the EDAC committee because it just was not operating in the capacity of what it should be and it was just kind of taking time away from staff and what they could focus on other things so this is why I'm going to be forward it's just we got to operate as efficient as possible because we just don't have the time so we have to make the most with every time with every day that we have so anyways okay and that's all Okay. So we don't want to go ahead and make the first motion to yeah. waive. Um, yeah, Mayor Pertim, I'd like to uh, all motion to waive the first reading of ordinance number 1204 as read by title. And do I have a second? Mr. Begonia? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No no's. Okay. Now we'll go on to. Uh, introduce the ordinance as submitted as ordinance number 1204. Mr. Jones? Yes, Make a motion to introduce ordinance number 1204 as read by title. And do I have a second? Mr. Begonia? Second. And can I get a roll call, Ms. Mount Mountain? Um, Lambert? Yes. Begonia? Yes. Jones? Yes. Lewis? Giannis? All right. Uh, the ordinance passes. Uh, Ezra, as introduced. We'll now move on to item number 10. This is consideration of approval of City Council Resolution number 6739, accepting public utility improvements within the private community for East Center Phase 3A Pioneer Development Company. <coughs> yes, Mr. Okay. Mayor, members of Council. Yes. Um, presented before you tonight is the request to 
except the public utility improvements that have been uh, built with the East Center Phase 3, track number 2016-02. <coughs> the improvements include um, <coughs> electric <coughs> areas, uh, streets, um, uh, the utility water and sewer. And the, uh, the utilities are being asked to uh, be accepted as um, uh, accepted as um, improved, approved by the city. They have been inspected and approved, and staff is recommending that the, uh, the city accept the public utility improvements as meeting their condition for uh, <coughs> East Center Phase 3. All right, thank you. And do I have any questions? Miss Lewis? Thank you. Um, well, my first question I, I see is Pioneer Development Company. I assume that's one of the many LLCs for Greg Hostetler. Am I correct on that? Okay. And um, accepting uh, these improvements, does that include any public uh, right of way that abuts this particular project, such as the sidewalks, landscaping, or anything is, uh, of that sort? No, the the, um, the public improvements are uh, the water lines and sewer lines within the public right of way. That's it's uh, strictly those utilities. Okay, so since that, I mean, can someone explain to me then <clears throat> when does the landscaping come into this? Since the sidewalks are there. At one time, there was landscaping; it all died, and now there's nothing there. So, when do we take that up? Oh, in the next phase. And that would be phase. Three B. Three B. Okay. Three B. So that is, is, all of the all the public landscaping that affronts that property, uh, and I assume three B is what's happening with the second phase of the gated community to my knowledge yes okay. ma'am and so all of center street will be landscaped under 3b yes ma'am okay <clears throat> all right three b is his i'm being told that three b is its own phase Okay. It, it's, it'll come forward in the next, in the next phase, but it's own. No. But so not at this moment with this phase that we're going through the right now. The council member is concerned, though, about the public landscaped area, the common area on Center Avenue, and when that would come forward. Yes, and it's yeah. separate phase. And do you have any idea when that would come forward to the council? Um, no, we do not at no, this time. No, not at this time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. At this time, then we'll make a motion. Take a, accept a motion. Mr. Begonia? I'd like to make a motion to have consideration for approval of City Council Resolution number 6739. And do I have a second? And do I have a second? Mr. Jones? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem, I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion for uh, Mr. Begonia for City Council Resolution number 6739 as submitted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And no one knows. Okay, it passes. So we'll move on to item 11. This is consideration of approval of City Council Resolution number 6740 approving professional services agreement for emergency shelter service mission merced incorporated and amending the 2023 2024 fiscal year budget as it pertains to revenues and expenditures in the california housing and community development hcd funds and we'll go to community community economic economic mr selms thank you again mr uh, mayor pro tem 
Um, so this item before you um, is a request to direct permanent local housing allocation, PLHA, formulaic funds towards a contract with the Merced Rescue Mission to operate a non-congregate emergency shelter, which are our bridge homes um, that house 20 people um, within the city of Los Banos. Uh, the city was informed uh, by Merced County uh, that the current Merced Continuum of Care and Merced County funding dedicated to the Los Banos Bridge Homes would be ceasing effective June 30th, 2024. Um, so with that, staff, in order to um, avoid displacement of uh, 20 homeless individuals back out onto the street, um, is requesting that we allocate uh, the 2019 allocation and really uh, allocate the permanent local housing allocation to um, fund uh, the bridge homes. Um, and the 2019 allocation is $188,184. And, uh, uh, this is from HCD. Uh, that funding uh, does come from the state. Uh, the city does need to use this funding um, or we will use our, lose our 2019 allocation. Uh, so the project that we would like to move forward on is um, funding the bridge homes. We were hoping and hanging on to these um, funds for Home Key, but we have not heard back yet from Home Key. And the state is requiring that we expend at least our 2019 allocation um, or else we will lose it. Um, so until we hear back from Home Key, we're requesting that that 2019 allocation um, be um, rerouted to um, fund the bridge homes with Merced Rescue Mission. Um, I hope that answers all your questions and that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Elms. Uh, anyone else have any questions? Ms. Lewis. Thank you. Um, so Stacy, the, um, the uh, Merced County Continuum of Care, the COC monies that are going to be discontinued June 30th, where did that money come from initially? So that money um, is from the state of California. It's HAP funding. It's the Homeless Housing Assistance and Prevention. Um, and that's been eliminated by the governor's budget. There's a huge hole in um, the state budget and that's creating a um, deficiency in the county's budget for homeless services. Okay. And with that said, um has there been any word that has come down from Sacramento that um, any of the uh, PLHA funding is in jeopardy as a re result of the budget deficit? Um, so the PLHA funds are from SB2, Senate Bill 2, and what those funds are and, and why they are unique in that those are sustainable, stable funds. So those funds come with each transaction each recording transaction, there's a fee that's paid. So unless the voters of California um, reverse SB2, uh, then there will always be that funding source to come forward. Okay, and, and the, from the 2019 to 2022, all of those funds have been actually set aside for our home key project as seed money. They have been, um, but because we haven't heard back from Home Key yet from HCD, our 2019 funds, our allocation is in jeopardy. So we need to use it. And that's why staff is recommending we move forward with the bridge homes and the contract with Merced Rescue Mission. So we do not lose our 2019 allocation. And because Merced the state's Rescue taking Mission so is the vendor for this program? Yes, they are currently the um, vendor in contract mm -hmm. with uh, the county and um, Merced continu Continuum of Care. And so we would just be continuing on um, with their services. Okay. And how long uh, has staff determined how long this 188,000 is gonna last? Or is there a time frame that we have to spend it in? Um, so we do have to spend it um, 
and it 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 will be a year essentially that'll fund us for a year with the bridge homes from from march 1st of this year to march of next year and hopefully to the end of the fiscal year hopefully of this fiscal year no next fiscal next year. fiscal okay right. all right okay thank you mm -hmm. all right. uh, any more questions uh, if no more questions uh, i'll accept a motion council member Baconia. I'd like to make a motion for consideration of approval of city council resolution number 6740 as submitted. Thank you. Do I have a second? Mr. I'll Jones? Second Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 No no's. Oh, Bridget, it's passed. We'll now move on to item 12, advisement of public notices. And there's three reports and we'll turn to Ms. Elms. Thank you again. Um, so the first item is for Frugal Logistics. Uh, they are proposing a site plan um, with various site improvements on 3.9 acres. Uh, this is um, located on East Pacheco Boulevard um, and will be a um, nice renovation for that logistics area. Um, the next is a mobile food vendor permit. Um, this is for um, a Francisco Javier Godinez. Um, he will be operating in, at 830 I Street. This is currently where Smokey Joe's Billiards is located. This will re be replacing an existing mobile food vendor truck. Um, so we will not be adding an additional one. This will be replacing an existing truck. And then the last is a conditional use permit for a Type 21 alcohol license. Um, and this is for um, Western Sing Stores, Inc. And this would be located um, at 647 West Pacheco Boulevard. These public hearings will be held next Wednesday, February 28th at 6 p.m. here in the council chambers. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Elms. And we'll now we'll turn to the city manager report. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, Charles Berkson uh, to our team. Welcome to the family, Charles. Happy to have you. Uh, Charles, our new public works director, comes to us with uh, 30 plus years of working in uh, city government. In various forms, he's worked for the city of Malibu, East Compton, uh, sorry, East Compton, city of Malibu, Compton, city of East Palo Alto, and various other cities. So today is his second day on the job. Uh, so uh, thank you, Charles. We appreciate all you do and uh, look yeah, forward to you, working Council. with you. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Premier. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, city attorney, city manager. <laughs> all right. Now we'll move on to uh, the report and update on the Merced County Association of Governments, the MCAG. Uh, the Peninsula Clean Energy, the PCE, Measure V Committee, and the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District. And uh, right now I'll ask Ms. Lewis if she has anything to report. Thank you. Uh, yes, a uh, couple of weeks ago I spoke to um, the community to let them know that um, the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District uh, was, uh, had submitted an application um, and was approved for $56 million for, uh, from the Federal Highway Commission uh, for two new charging stations, one in Taft and one in um, Gustine. So at our last meeting, we accepted the funds and approved the $56 million. Um, and um, of the grants that were given out uh, in the United States, including Puerto Rico, um, it was the third largest one in the United States and the largest one in the state of California. Um, Interstate 5 uh, is, is a main corridor all the way from San Diego up to, I believe it's into can going into Canada. And so um, uh, the, this, this covers um, east, east west uh, highway traffic for commercial uh, and for valley farming communities to major ports of access trucking routes in California, the port of Oakland in Northern California and the ports of Long Beach, LA and San Diego in Southern California. Um, the location site for us here in the Northern part of uh, Interstate 5 will be in Gustine off of uh, Highway 5 and 140. Um, it will accompany 45 passenger vehicle sites, 
uh, which will have uh, 240 kilowatts of fast charge, eight commercial vehicle uh, s uh, specific sites, which will have uh, 12,000 megawatt, um, uh, mega kilowatts of charging time. So I think that's for our big rigs. Uh, 40 commercial vehicle sites at another 240 kilowatts for fast charging. I think that is probably just like the charging that um, Tesla has for their cars uh, for fast charge. And um, it'll be open 24-7. Uh, it'll have rest stops, restrooms, and um, charging capacity for uh, 23,760 trucks annually. And um, uh, 19,008 truck annual with megawatt charges. So it's it's quite a uh, uh, it's the lot of the two two areas. The the Gustine site has the most acreage. Uh, this is in partnership with a company called Watt EV, and um, it's it's not any matching money from the Air Board. It's all funded by uh, Watt AV and the Federal Highway uh, Commission. So I was happy to hear that we got that grant uh, in our area and that we finally have something on the Interstate 5 rather than on the 99 corridor because that's where a lot of the monitoring is done. But the uh, Federal Highway Commission saw fit that something should be on the, on the Interstate 5 corridor. Um, also, and, and um, let's see, for, uh, the, I had made mention of this before that uh, the San Joaquin uh, Valley Air Pollution Control Board has grants available. Uh, this is our first year as an experiment to communities to put on laser light shows. Um, I've forgotten the dollar amount. I should have looked that up, but it's significant amount. I, I think it was, I think it was over 15,000. I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but you can find that online. I thought this might be, Maribel, something good for your organization. As uh, time goes on, it, it appears that uh, our typical pyrotechnic uh, uh, fireworks shows will begin to be outlawed in California. We saw some, ex I saw some examples of laser light shows online and it has a tendency to be more innovative where you can include figures of people, vehicles, all kinds of things other than just the explosion of fireworks in the air. So um, that might be something your organization or any organization uh, within uh, Merced County is eligible to apply for that grant, mo grant money that's out there. So it, it, I think it would be a good time to jump on it right away while it's still fresh. Um, <clears throat> also, um, on... Um, Saturday, March the 2nd, between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m., there's going to be a free smog repair event at the Los Banos Fairgrounds. And um, it's, it's, a, it's no appointment. It's just a drive-in. Uh, you can get your ca a car checked for smog to see if it will pass smog. Uh, it, and the cars have to be of a certain age, it, you know, if it's, I think if it's older than 2006, uh, um, you're probably not going to be eligible. But nonetheless, um, there's funding up to $500 to help people who are not able to pass smog to get their, their cars um, repaired in order to pass smog. Um, these events go throughout the valley. Um, there was one in Merced, I believe it was last month, and so uh, this is the first one we've had in a couple of years. So I just want to make sure that anybody out there who uh, is, has an older vehicle and um, has issues with smog, be sure you get to this event to see if you can get assistance to pass smog uh, with your vehicle. And again, that's on Saturday. March the 2nd between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. at the fairground here in Los Banos. <clears throat> uh, 
the the last thing I I wanted to just make a point of is I noticed as I'm driving around the city that uh, I'm seeing chunks of asphalt just kind of sticking up out of the street. And, uh, you know, that could be pretty dangerous for people driving vehicles, hitting that at nighttime and perhaps puncturing their their tires. Uh, I know that because of the storms that we've had uh, last year and this year, our, our streets are in disrepair. Uh, I know that there was a schedule at one point to start making repairs. I'm seeing grass growing up through our streets. Um, and uh, we used to have a lot of crack seal repairs go on uh, throughout the year. I don't know how we're going to catch up on this or where the budget is on this, but that might be something our new public works director might want to bring back to council to let us know where we are in that process to repair these, these streets. I, I know it can't be done while it's raining, um, but certainly uh, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of things that are dangerous out there on our public streets that need to be taken care of. Uh, and welcome aboard uh, to our no, new public works director. All right, thank you. Um, and that's that's all I have tonight, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, and you're going to take that as your council report to also add it in with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Jones, anything for Los Banos downtown? No, I have one more thing since okay. you're going to take that as my oh. council report. Um, I'm hoping that this council will support um, uh, the gentleman who brought forth the California Sustainable Coalition. Uh, it, it's a really important. Um, it's really important that these growers have the ear of our governor. I know that we're in a budget crisis, but this just doesn't affect them. This affects us in the long run as far as the pricing of our produce is concerned here in California and whether or not uh, any of these companies are going to be able to stay in business. And the more farmers that go out of business and not being able to, to, to produce as a result of the restrictive laws that are coming down from our legislators, um, well, you know how that goes. I, I don't need to explain it any further. So I, I, I would hope that um, if this council could bring this back at our next meeting and vote on whether or not we want to support this and uh, send a letter with all of our signatures on it, I, I, I just think that's really important. So, and, and waiting uh, much longer would would delay the process of uh, moving this forward because I, I see that uh, there are a lot of uh, cities that have signed on and um, a, as individuals and also uh, boards of supervisors in our in our county and in Fresno County and, and surrounding counties with the San Joaquin Valley. Um, I do intend to support this, so I, I hope the rest of you do. Thank you. That's All it. Right. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Uh, Mr. Jones, Los Banos downtown? Uh, on the downtown association. Okay, thank you. And unfortunately, you can see that I'm filling in for uh, Mayor Paul. Uh, so I'm not sure. I, I, he didn't get, I wasn't able to get me any update on the MCAG, so I don't have anything. So hopefully next meeting he'll uh, be able to put out there for the MCAG. Uh, now we'll move on down to the uh, council members' reports. And I'll go last, and I'll go ahead and start with Mr. Begonia. I just want to say uh, welcome aboard, Mr. Bergson. And uh, yeah, you're welcome. Um, and then uh, next Friday, I talked about last uh, council meeting, the Arbor Day celebration, uh, March 1st, 4 to 6 p.m. at the Talbot Basin Park. All right. That's all I have to add. No, I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Jones? Yeah, I do want to welcome our new uh, public works director. And that is all. I appreciate it. And I'll go last. I do welcome you. Uh, nice to meet you earlier, Mr. Bergeson. Um, also, don't forget about the pancake uh, breakfast this weekend. Uh, that's coming up usually a good uh, run. But um, I, like Ms. Lewis was saying about uh, uh, supporting, so uh, I, I kind of have an issue with that $56 million for this charging. But when state of California, you know, everybody always talks about where our money's going. Well, you know, if it is the roads, why are we not fixing our roads in the state of California? $56 million will go a long ways for fixing our roads. Or how about 
helping out with the state of California and homeless. So I don't support that electrical uh, charging unit out there. I think it could be uh, something. I mean, everybody, whoever buys cars, you get your own charging system at your homes anyway, or you could support that. I think that 56 million could go somewhere else. Uh, but that's just myself. Uh, what Miss Lewis was actually talking about with that gentleman that she wants to support, it is actually supporting uh, moving that deadline for 30, 30, 2035 out further because it will uh, hamper our vehicles here in the state of California with our trucks and the cars. We're not, our, it's not our time yet. We still got a long ways to go with this electrical system. The state of California has a lot more going on that needs to be taken care of first before we start worrying about building these $56 million uh, charging units. So that's all I have to say. Uh, and at this time, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Mr. Jones. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Mayor, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nose. The meeting adjourned at 810.